The information provided by Taming Lightning is designed to provide helpful information and to educate on the subjects discussed. The information provided is true and complete to the best of our knowledge and is not intended to be used without professional guidance and supervision. All recommendations are made without guarantee on part of Taming Lightning and affiliates. Taming Lightning and affiliates disclaim any liability in connection with the use of this information. Taming Lightning Podcast is supported by the Pittsburgh Glass Center, a nonprofit public access glass studio and one of the top glass facilities of its kind in the U.S., with a knowledgeable and friendly staff and a safe, fun atmosphere. Our community is made up of artists, collectors, students, or just those fascinated by glass. Depending on your interests and schedule, there's a class for you, be it a two-hour introductory workshop, eight-week classes, or five-day summer intensives taught by artists from all over the world. Taming Lightning is affiliated with the Plasma Art Alliance, which formed in 2017 during the exhibition The Art of Plasma at MONA, the Museum of Neon Art. Their mission is to promote the illuminated plasma in glass as a sculptural art medium, foster public awareness for this art form through exhibitions, conferences, and educational art reach, and support the exchange of information related to techniques and technologies essential to the advancement of the field. PAA will serve the growing interest in this evolving art for the mutual benefit of artists, enthusiasts, and patrons. If you're interested or would like to join, you can find them on the web at www.plasmaartalliance.com. And before I get going here on the episode, I'd like to mention a support option uh, for Taming Lightning, which is coffee. That is K-O-F-I. This will be replacing the buy me a coffee option used previously, and I want to switch to something that's been around a little bit longer and worked better for presenting my content. With this, you're basically donating or giving a tip at the cost of a $3 cup of coffee based on how you think I'm doing, and if you like the project, it's nice to support it. Your donation goes directly to the podcast for means of assisting with audio equipment upgrades, billing or hosting, software or services used in processing audio, and future travel and professional content. You are by no means obligated to donate, but any support, including commenting and sharing, is appreciated. Welcome back or welcome to the Taming Lightning Podcast. I'm Percy Eccles II. I'm the creator and host of Taming Lightning, as well as the Emerging Plasma Tech at Pittsburgh Glass Center, where I'm researching and developing a space for exploring plasma and neon light. Taming Lightning Podcast is a series of conversations to help expand our understanding of plasma and neon light, looking beyond its associations with novelty and sign making, and to explore the potential of noble gases as an artistic medium with each guest sharing their unique knowledge and experience. The intro is boosted by Joachim Krud. Joachim is a Swedish artist who loves to create chill and happy music and does so for copyright for use. Be sure to support his music by giving credit when used, subscribing, and or by donation via Patreon. You can find him on Facebook, YouTube, SoundCloud, and Spotify. Hello, Lightning Tamers. Percy here. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of a, um, a review or a small little mini-sode. And the subject is regards to plasma workshops and expectations. I did a little Instagram TV little video for you guys. And this is just to kind of elaborate on that little stream of consciousness and uh, provide you that context through the podcast. And so for this episode, I'm going to look at the Blow and Glow class taught at Pittsburgh Glass Center, which was a week-long intensive during this summer 2019. Uh, it was taught by Jaime Guerrero and Ed Kirshner, uh, bringing together two glass artists who had worked in the past. And mind you, they worked together in college on kind of making forms and their beginning of their careers. Uh, what was interesting is um, we were also uh, we were also assisted by the, the TAs. Tyler Straits, who is a former student of Jaime, and Nico Morse, who taught a class here in flameworking and sculpting at the Pittsburgh Glass Center. 
I want to also give a shout out to our students here who are pretty awesome. Uh, everyone grew. We had a different set of skill sets. And it was really able to help us build a vocabulary of what was a, a potential for plasma uh, with everyone kind of jumping in without with very little knowledge or some knowledge on the subject. And in saying that, we do have a quite a selection of students from all over. Uh, Rachel Bartek, Sean Bradley from uh, Philly. We have Douglas Brown from L.A. area. Taylor Cox from Mount Tulsa. Uh, we have Dave Crockett and Liz Holm, who are our, our local PGC renters. We have Joey Dollard, who's back from my hometown in Bloomington, Illinois. We have Chaz Bianco and his mother, uh, Melody. Uh, Melody helped, uh, you know, keep everyone hydrated and pretty much with a shop mom, taking a lot of photos for us to kind of have and share, especially when it's busy making all of these stuff. Um, we also had Mick Lash, a former uh, Pittsburgh uh, glass blower here. Harriet Schwartzrock from out in Australia. Justin Spillers and Hoso Yoon, uh, who's out in SIU. Uh, so I like to thank these guys for coming in and participating in this class and this really experimental um, case where we are teach learning from a different instructor and really trying to come up with something new, come in with an empty glass and keep filling that up. So in regards to workshops, it'll be good to lay down a few definitions to work with. Uh, first of all, workshops can come in many different forms. In a, and for those who are academic, um, workshops mean an extended period of working time under an intense direction uh, pro provided by a facility or institution like uh, summer workshops at Pilchuck, Penland, Pittsburgh Glass Center, Urban Glass, you name any of those type of facilities that provides this opportunity to work in your medium um, where you would normally not be able to do that in your everyday life. And then you have workshop as a definition for those kind of working into those public institutions. Like at the Pittsburgh Glass Center, we have uh, flowers, paperweights, and things of that sort to kind of guide you through that experience. And maybe if you're really interested, um, you go beyond the social aspect and learn the, the, the medium and the art form and continue to build your skill sets from there. So understandably, we got people who have, in our daily lives, don't have this, uh, this fantastical opportunity to be in the studio and making all the time as a uh, so-called full-time artist. Um, whatever that should mean. I mean, you have family, you have a job, you have responsibilities, you have your other hobbies, and those can definitely um, make it different. And truly what happens with these workshops is you're coming in to learn a new skill, a new perspective, a new perception, or possibly refining a skill set um, that you've been working on through a someone with a different, uh, a higher level of skill, of course. And what is really important when you take these workshops is that you be able to put any of these new pieces of information or different pieces of information into your own practice and methods of making. That's how you really get the best out of that opportunity. So I can really understand how um, in terms of plasma where it's rare and there's not many opportunities to take the class or even if you made your pieces to fill it up. So I can really understand where we had a lot of students really wishing they could have gone through the entire process of the full plasma making, um, where in this class we did allow and focus on making the forms and getting the students with two filled pieces to take home with plasma drivers to power those things. The missing component that we didn't get to walk through was the aspect of making your bases and kind of wiring everything up to a very nice uh, what do you say, uh, exhibition-ready piece or completely finished piece. Now, following that entire conversation was a discussion after the class in which students were asking about uh, really having that last component to follow through on. I mean, once we made the piece, once we were kind of had an idea what you wanted to make, we needed something to finish it off, to have a complete piece. Um, and that's understandable. So the solution that we kind of discussed is perhaps doing a multi-week class that would be sort of a master class. A master class for the definition of being a um, an accelerated learning, an accelerated 
project-based learning, uh, where I guess typically masterclass denotes to the idea of high-level student working with a high-level instructor on advanced techniques or refinement. So that would be one solution, and that's something we've been discussing. But in the end, I, I guess I have to ask you guys to let go of that notion that you have to come through to complete peace. I mean, the idea of the workshop as defined in the beginning of this was just a way to open your eyes to a new idea, to bring in a new practice or a new perspective. Um, and I can understand that frustration. It, many times in my own practice, as I try to resolve a piece, I don't clearly see the end of it. And that's something that you have to do when you have a handle of what the potential of plasma could be where you have to work through a form a lot. And that's where I want to bring in two terms called the front end and back end. So the front end denotes to anything before and during the making of the glass. Back end is post-finishing production. That could be making the bases. That could be cold working. That could be some kind of polish or whatever it may be. If you're used to being in a class where you can make a vessel shape, a functional wear, glassware, um, you'll know that you'll come home with a lot of different shapes and pieces. It's the nature of it. You do a lot of front-end work. That is, understanding design, how to make it, and then putting in the work to make it, and then typically you're done after it comes out the kiln. Sculpture, if you've done sculpture or, or you played around with it or just know it, uh, you're going to spend a lot of time making components. You may be reworking a piece. You may be doing some finishing work. You may be doing some background stuff. Um, plasma has a sliding scale of what it means to finish a piece. Sometimes it's the front end and you don't have to make a base and it just sits on this pedestal. But you have to think about the end part of that, this whole process. Is the shape you're making in the end result going to be a pedestal piece? Is it going to be hung from the wall? Or is it going to be hung from the ceiling? Or maybe it's a part of another sculpture. When that happens, you may have to rework how you made the piece so it can better fit the end result. And then when you're done with the front end, which involves designing and making, the back end occurs. And that could be some cold working. That could be, it also definitely includes the filling aspect. It could be how you place the electrode. It could be how you place the power supply. And then when you're designing your sculpture, you know, you're, you're tuning in that to the specific environment it's going to be in. And if you don't have that clear image of what the end result is, then your front end work you're going to have to do with your front end work, then you're going to have to spend a lot of time in the back end to make sure that it all fits very well and it'll go smoothly. And we know this. Um, if you ever try making one thing and then change the idea radically and trying to compensate for something you didn't uh, prepare for in your design, that takes a lot of extra work and a lot of extra materials. In the end, when it comes to plasma, you're balancing a lot of different variables and various knowledges. In terms of knowledges, you have to have understanding of glass making, what it makes, what it takes in terms of making your form to have it be able to be filled, which is creating and developing techniques to add a small tube that comes off your piece that can be hooked up to the system. It has an understanding of filling that piece and how it's being uh, lit up and how it's being electrified, to uh, understanding electronics and understanding which parts to go with what. Uh, which power supplies that you would use and how to modify that so it's safe and it can fit within a base if needed and how to wire it and install it for exhibition or home usage. So you might be thinking now, um, man, this is very overwhelming. I'm not sure if I want to investigate or invest in this process. Um, from the workshop standpoint, you have an opportunity to take that knowledge and use it in your studio practice, especially understanding how to create your forms, solving the puzzle of how you want it to be lit up and how to connect the piece to the system ever after seeing how that works. The next step would be to find an institution or studio that you can get your pieces filled or find someone who has a personal studio which would offer those services. Now you can see that there's that issue, right? The very few opportunities or places to do that at one of them could be Pittsburgh Glass Center, which I'm developing here. Um, Urban Glass is working on building their plasma manifold after the uh, exploration and pioneering of Amy Lemire. Um, and then we have various individual artists who may offer their services to fill your pieces. Now we can see where, you know, we start out with developing the knowledge through workshops. 
finding and building institutions and spaces to do that. The next level after that is exhibitions and truly developing your own artwork. And there's a lot of stuff to build on, not just the glass blowing skill, not just the knowledge of how to fill, not just the institutions and places to fill your pieces at and work at it at, but also the very objects that power these devices. And there are very few that are available. And we make the best of what we have. If there's anything I can say about this process and this practice, is that we are not limited by our resources. We are only limited by our resourcefulness. The outro is The Process by Lakey Inspired. Jordan, a.k.a. Lakey, is a Los Angeles-based artist with the goal of inspiring others to create by sharing positive music around the world. Thus, he works hard to produce music every week for copyright-free use. Be sure to support his music by giving credit when used, subscribing, and or by donation via Patreon. You can find him on Instagram, YouTube, SoundCloud, and Spotify. Thank you for listening to Taming Lightning Podcast. Um, This is awesome, guys. So this is the first little mini episode type of deal. I am working on some more that will be companion audios to uh, some articles I'm writing here. Just kind of compiling all the stuff I learned so far in the last three years of working with Plasma. And in in the end, I want to thank uh, you guys. I want to thank the Pittsburgh Glass Center and Jaime Guerrero and Ed Kirshner. Um, Pittsburgh Glass Center has been a great support for me both as a place of research and inspiration. I meet a lot of different people through the Glass Center. I've been able to do a lot of things I normally would not be able to without it. And of course, allowing me to invite these different guests and these different artists to teach at the Glass Center to help build this knowledge. I'd also like to thank the Plasma Art Alliance, a growing community for plasma artists, enthusiasts, makers, and those who are interested in collecting this work. Um... Without them, I wouldn't have the access that I do to the people and the knowledge that's being shared within this collective. Again, you can check them out at www.plasmaartalliance.com. You can sign up and see who's currently in it. It is a growing and developing website, but if you are interested in this process and want to learn more or want to be a part of it, definitely tune into that. If you'd like to support Taming Lightning, subscribe to our newsletter at www taminglightning.net or follow on Instagram at Taming Lightning. Other options for support are donations through Coffee, spelled ko-fi.com where you can donate for the price of a $3 cup of coffee. Links will be provided in the show notes below. Feel free to share, comment, and subscribe and I'll see you next time.